Now, I'm not a big fan of Trump. I don't like how he tries to be like a used car salesman to try to get his way with other countries. I mean, he's not a team player. Yes, we should be looking for our own interests, but we should also be trying to look at the interests for the rest of the world as well. And, and Trump just doesn't seem to have that sense. That's my biggest problem with him. Everything that sucked about working with the U.S. before is increased by a tenfold with Trump. Should we be putting our own interests first? To at least a degree? Sure. But if that is at the exclusion of the rest of the world, no. A big, huge no. I shouldn't say at the exclusion. I should say at the, at the, the cost of the rest of the world. You know, if, if, if in order to put America first, you have to shit on other countries, essentially, yeah, that's, that's a problem. You know, again, Trump isn't a team player. And so this affects most of his policies. You know, I, I am pretty disgusted at the concentration camps. You can say, well, it started under Obama or even before Obama. Okay, yeah, but it never got to this point. Okay, the, the, main, the main criticisms of Obama during his administration were, uh, oh, he's a Kenyan Muslim wearing a tan suit. He's, he's coming for your guns. The Kenyan Muslim with a tan suit is coming for your guns, right? There wasn't anything really significant that they could go after him for. But if this sort of crisis would have come into place because of tightening down on the existing laws and regulations and such, you know, if he would have tightened up on those things, we might be in the same situation we're in now with Trump. But if that had happened and this stuff had gotten on the news, especially at the point it is, it's been lately where they don't even have enough supplies to be sanitary. I mean, that's, that's nuts. And they're sleeping on cement floors with aluminum blankets. But do you think if something like that was happening during the Obama administration and it was being pointed out, don't you think at least something at least symbolic would have been done to try to take care of it or try to try to tackle the, the PR disaster that it is? Don't you think something would have been done about it? It would have been nice if something actually really would have helped the situation and not just a symbolic kind of thing. But, I mean, don't you imagine something would have been done about it? But not this administration. And there are people that just don't seem to have a problem with this sort of thing happening. How some of you are okay with that. You're okay with this happening to these people. We give, our regular, we give our regular prisoners better care than that. And then, of course, there will be some people, they're usually on the right, I usually don't hear it from people on the left, but I'm sure it happens, who will say the same things about, you know, they'll, they'll def I should say not say the same things, they'll defend uh, some of the awful conditions that are in some jails. You know, they'll defend that. Well, will they get what they deserve? Some of you have this attitude of, oh, well, these people deserve to, uh, the, the, the migrants, these migrants deserve uh, everything they're getting because uh, they're, they tried to come in illegally. They need to come in the legal ways. You know, we, we, need to, we need to have cruelty be the reason why uh, people are deterred away from uh, wanting to come into this country through the Mexican border. Yeah, let's, let's just show that the world that we, if you try to do that, you're going to be treated like shit. You're going to be in a concentration camp for an undefined period of time. And yes, it's a concentration camp. It's people being detained without trial for an, an unknown period of time. How long are they going to be there? 
Oh, but but it's not nothing like Hitler. This is so we're comparing to, uh, how it, that we're trying to say it's it's so great because we're we're not torturing them. Oh, at least we're not torturing them. At least we're not gassing them. Is that really your argument? Pretty, it's pretty disgusting if that's the argument. Hopefully no one's actually trying to argue that. There will be some who probably do. But most of the people that's, that aren't just horrified at, at uh, these concentration camps that we've, that we've created, hopefully you'll at least think a little bit more about it. Not, not just shoved off so casually as, oh, what's the big deal? I, I don't know. I, I just can't. I can't imagine. I'm, I'm just trying to imagine, but I can't. What kind of mindset someone would have to have to think it's okay to treat illegal immigrants this way? Separating from their families, children separating children from their families, having children take care of other children, having sanitary conditions that are just unthinkable and you you think that's somehow okay now there's a lot of people on the left who assume that anyone who says they voted for trump or is a trump supporter or especially the uh the people wearing mega hats there's this assumption that if you're one of those people that you support these concentration camps well i guess the first thing we should be asking is well do you now, if your first thing to your first response to someone asking that question is, "Well, they're not really concentration camps," so you're going to excuse them, you're going to excuse this, and probably put the blame on the Democrats for allowing this to happen. Yeah, like the wall is really going to take care of that. Yeah, the wall, the wall will end the concentration camps. No, it won't. And I know you're not stupid enough to, to suggest that it would. What are we going to do about this situation? And we can't just say, oh, well, um, uh, they've, they've committed no crime, so let's just let them in and have no borders. Let's just go the no borders policy. Open borders, I should say. Uh, open borders policy. Are we going is, is, we to say that's the answer? I don't think that should be the answer either. I don't think they should be able to separate families. And I think they should have at least... They should at least have the, uh, uh, the anemones that you find at, at, a, at a prison or something. At the very least. Not, not this shit. Sleeping on concrete with a, with a foil blanket, with an aluminum blanket, and without access to the ability to be sanitary. Children taking care of children. It's just disgusting. But still, someone wearing a MAGA hat doesn't necessarily mean that, that they support that. There's this Washington Post article that I read regarding uh, Hill County Barbecue, Hill Country Barbecue, I should say, where this guy was kicked out of their establishment for harassing a Trump supporter. Um, his tweet reads, Guy wears MAGA hat at my favorite restaurant. I say, hey, are you from D.C.? He says, no. I say, we don't tolerate racism in this city. His girlfriend then physically jabs fingers into my chest and starts threatening me. Management tells me to leave, not the woman who assaulted me. And uh, people are all up in arms over this, and I'm just like, well, don't harass someone wearing a hat. You don't. And you, you can say that's not harassment, but telling them that they're a racist for wearing a hat supporting the president, it, it, you know, that's, that's harassment. There's, there's no getting around that. If you're going to preach multiculturalism, if you're going to state that multiculturalism is the future, it is the way that uh, we should be, and you can't even handle what already exists, you can't even handle what's already common— how are you going to handle some uh, some mindset that's against your existence? How are you going to handle that? And the thing is, you can't claim to know what someone is about 
about all of their politics because they wear a MAGA hat? Should, should people have made assumptions to anyone wearing an Obama pin or having an Obama sticker on their car? Should people have made certain assumptions about someone if they have that and treat them like shit as a result of what they, those assumptions? Now, granted, I mean, there's also the people that wear a MAGA hat just to, just to try to get a, a rise out of people. It's essentially going, ha ha. I don't know what that, that Simpsons character is called, but, uh, you know, it's essentially one of those. But how do you tell the difference? How do you tell one from another? Well, a lot of Republicans, not all of them, um, a lot of people who support Trump are quite happy to not actually give a way of you knowing that. They're glad that it's vague. It gives them more power. But... Man, it, it just doesn't, it's, it's not right to claim that if someone wears a mega hat, that they're a fascist or that they're racist. You don't know shit about them except that they're wearing this, this hat that is saying that they support the president. Some people are saying, no, the mega hat is, is the new KKK uniform. And on that article that I, that, uh, yeah, Washington Post. Um, after confronting a diner in a MAGA hat, customer gets tossed from Hill County Barbecue. Okay. And I was looking at the comments. And some people are blatantly making the statement that Republicans are white supremacists. Just, just making that, just saying that as an absolute, as if it's a fact. Now, I've seen people come close to saying that, but I've not usually seen it just actually outright said like that. You know, people have hinted at it, but they've never just said it directly, and now people are feeling bold enough to just say it directly. They think that Republicans, if you're a, if you're a Republican, you're a white supremacist. I don't, I don't even know, I don't even know how to respond to that. How do you respond to that? But that's the kind of shit that, uh, that some people who are anti-Trump are. And, and these people, I think, really do have Trump derangement syndrome. Now, you can say, well, the Republicans aren't saying anything. They aren't making a big deal about these conditions. And some of them are even trying to say the conditions aren't as bad as the pictures are showing. Yeah, that's something to be pissed off at. But how do you deal with people like this? How do you deal with people who say... Well, at least it's not like the uh, kinds of uh, concentration camps that Hitler had. Yeah, how do you argue against those people? How do you argue against people who say, well, they deserve what they get because they tried to come in illegally? Yeah, how do you argue against those people? What do you call those people? I mean, you could say, well, you call those people fascists, okay. But that doesn't include all Republicans. That doesn't include every person wearing a MAGA hat. Now, if you're saying these people, you know, silence equals consent, I guess. But how does, how does calling them all these things get us closer to the goal of, of taking care of this problem, this glaring concentration camp problem that we have? How does it bring us closer to solving that? Well, it doesn't. What can we do to bring us closer to solving that? Telling Democrats they need to support the wall doesn't solve any of this, doesn't, doesn't take care of the uh, concentration camp problem. So what do we do? I don't know. I don't claim to know the answers. I just know that I'm concerned. I'm concerned with all the polarization. I'm concerned with what's happening to our country, and I'm concerned about how people can't seem to see eye to eye worse than ever. You're either in this camp or you're in this camp. And when we have people saying, like Angry Aussie, claiming that if you're anti-Antifa, then you're fascist. Yeah, what, what you know, if, if that's the point that we're at, I mean, how are we going to get anywhere? 